Good morning and welcome to 365 Days of Amazing Stories with Theo Mera. Here we are on day 262 and I'm continuing and hopefully ending the story of Nur al-Din Ali ibn Bakar and the slave girl Shams al-Nahar from A Thousand and One Arabian Nights. And you might remember that the jeweler in Nur al-Din had fled to Al-Abar because they were worried that the confession of the maid would create scandal in their lives. And so they had gone and of course they'd been robbed and clothing and everything stolen. And this man had put them up and while there, Nur al-Din had said to the jeweler that he was sure that he was going to die. And that in dying, um, he should go, the jeweler should go and inform his mother so that he could be properly uh, wrapped and buried. And then after he'd done that, he fell into a deep swoon and could not be awakened. But when he finally did, he heard a woman who was singing this verse. Adversity has hastened our parting. After our happy love and joyful life, such parting after joy is bitter pain. Would that a lover were spared such a strife. Death's agony but a short moment lasts, but parting's pain stays always in the heart. God has allowed all lovers to unite, but has condemned me and kept us apart. And when he heard these words, he groaned and his soul left his body. Well, the jeweler had his body wrapped and left him, left the body in the care of this wonderful man that had taken them in. And from there, he made his way back to Baghdad. It took him a couple of days, and he went to the house of Nur al-Din, Ali ibn Bakar, and the servants greeted him and he inquired about Nur al-Din. And the jeweler said, please give me leave to see his mother. And so the servants left and brought Nur al-Din's mother to him. And there in sobs and broken sentences, he let Nur al-Din's mother know that he had passed. And she of course bore this news as best she could, but when she heard that he had died, she fell into a swoon. And once revived, she asked what had happened and the jeweler informed him of, or informed her of everything that had transpired. And she said, why didn't he share his secret with me? Now there's nothing to be done at that point, but the jeweler left her to deal with the situation and she ended up having people go to fetch Nero Din's body. The jeweler made his way home, and as he was walking home, his hand was seized by a woman that was completely dressed in black. And when she unveiled her face, the jeweler saw that it was the maid of Shams al-Nahar. Well, he led her, or they went, to the jeweler's other house. And there inside, the maid asked, what has happened to Nur al-Din? The jeweler shared all, and the two of them wept together. And then he asked what had happened to Shams al-Nahar. How had she passed? And the maid revealed to the jeweler, that, as she had told him before, Harun al-Rashad had prepared a beautiful place for her. 
in his palace, but Shams al Nahar was afraid of what was going to happen. He showered her with all gifts and everything good. And one evening he called for all of his concubines to be with him and seated Shams al Nahar next to him in a place of honor to let all of the other maids in his life, women in his life, to know of their status. And then some one of the maids sang this verse, sad love called for my tears and they replied and o'er my burning cheeks they fell and flowed until my eyes grown weary of the charge hid what I wished to show and what lay hidden showed. How can I hope my passion to conceal when my love is torment everyone can see? After my darling, death is to me sweet. I wonder how he would fare after me. And when Shams Anahar heard these words, she fell down onto the ground, lost control of herself. After bursting into tears, and was in a swoon but for a moment, before whole, her soul passed from her body as well. Haran al-Rashad had never doubted her. He'd spoke to her in the kindest of words. <sighs> but love's torment killed her. He had every musical instrument in the room broken and then prepared her body as well as best he could, for he indeed was his love, his favorite. Nir al-Din's body eventually arrived into the town, accompanied by mourners, people from all walks of life, to bid him farewell. The jeweler has lamented ever since and gone often to Nir al-Din's tomb, for he misses his company. And sometimes he sees near there the maid weeping at the tomb of Shams al-Nahar. And so here we end this story. And I'm sure thousand and one Arabian nights will we be on to the next tomorrow. Thanks for joining. Have a good rest of your day. And sorry for the sad tale. Love's lament. <laughs>